Hey, comic book collectors, do you want to protect what you collect? Do you hate when your comic books slide around in your short box or you need to turn them sideways just so they don't bend or fall over? Well, look no further than Sidekick Supplies. Their product fits firmly inside your comic box so you don't need to worry. And not only is their product made in the USA, but also ships free directly to your doorstop. Check out our sponsor, Sidekick Supplies at SidekickSupplies.com and use the code COMICOM15 for 15% off your purchase. Believe me, you'll be ordering more than one. Welcome to the one and only Comic-Con Podcast, your podcast for comic book news, reviews, and comic community drama with your host, Nemesis Prime and Milton the Man. Are you listening? What's going on, everybody? Season four, episode 39, recording this on uh, the September 26th. We are back in the studios finally after a wonderful episode last week. If you got a chance to listen to it, and if not, please go and check out uh, last week's episode live from Baltimore outside of Pickles Pub. <laughs> live from Pickles um, Pub. Yeah. <laughs> got, a, got a couple of good messages, got nice little DMs from last week's episode. So, um, but yeah, so last week we were all in Baltimore, um, myself uh, included, and Zach came up from Virginia. It was good times that I've, you know, been getting a lot more times to hang out with him this year, yeah. live, live and in person, right, man? Yep. So, it was uh, fun, dude. It was, it was, it was really cool, man. I honestly never been, <clears throat> I've been to Baltimore like once, but not for like an extended period of time, like multiple days. So it was cool, bopping around the city. Uh, the Orioles game was, man, dude. Camden Yards is phenomenal. Um, just an awesome, awesome stadium. So that was really fun. And yeah, dude, just, and you know what was kind of cool was it was a different crowd than like the terrific con guys who, like, when I do go to cons, those are like the crew that we typically hang out with and stuff, like our, our like mm -hmm. our, our go to, go to guys, you know? Yep. So it was really fun getting to hang out with like a different group of dudes um, and kind of get to know a few people like a, a lot better. So I, I didn't really enjoyed it, man. I had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, shit, we were hanging out with, obviously, you know, Jeff Comic Dunes. He's been on here. You got Stan Who? Reed. I don't know. <laughs> Comic Dunes. I don't know. Papa Jeff. Guy. He was doing some dancing, you know. Uh, oh, that short dude. Yeah. That yeah. short dude from Staten Island. Uh, you know, obviously, Stampede. You got uh, Neil from Keystone Comics. We were hanging out with the Reese Brothers. Dominator. Uh, dominator yeah and then uh our buddy who's actually on here as a guest uh kevin from shortbox what's going on buddy hey guys thanks for having me yeah, Mr. My, my bright orange pochito <laughs> cowl that i'm wearing so yeah great I, show it was super fun hanging out with you guys there yeah so for the people obviously people know and this is not a live or not a, a video podcast so i roll up sunday to <laughs> to baltimore comic-con <laughs> And all of a sudden, I see Kevin wearing this thing from afar, this orange like hoodie. And it's guys, it's hot. It's you know, it's September still. This guy's got a t shirt on, shorts, jeans, whatever, and this Pochito thing. And if you guys know from Chainsaw Man, the little pet who's <laughs> just <laughs> the craziest thing standing at his booth. And I'm like, at least I knew what it was. Like, I walked up, I was like, oh, Pochito. Like, it's not even a, like it's like a, it. a sweatshirt. It's like a, it's just a hood. It's like, what's yeah. the, um, it's a hooded cowl is what yeah. the lady who makes him calls it. Yeah. It's like that movie with um, Zach Galifianakis and he doesn't wear the turtleneck, but he just has the, it's just like a turtleneck <laughs> underneath a shirt. You know what I'm talking about? It's like the neck and it comes down, just cut here. He yep. puts a jacket over it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so you can't be bothered to wear a button up shirt. You just get the collar and tuck it into the top of your cardigan. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's so like that. <laughs> thank kevin thank you so much for coming on for people that don't know kevin works for shortbox he's been on this podcast many times to talk about multiple things we're going to update some stuff going on in the shortbox app and an announcement as well regarding uh regarding shortbox and us as well so um before we kind of get into it before we get into some community stuff we do have to talk about some quick things for baltimore actually let's do the community stuff and then we'll get into baltimore because yeah. there's some interesting stories that came out of baltimore for sure so um, these were two leftover questions from a couple of weeks ago from our community. Of course, you know, we posted on our Instagram. You can either DM us or I put it in the stories or hit us up at the Comic Con podcast at gmail.com. So, uh, Mike the Beast Benson, question for our Batman fans Who is your favorite Batman actor? Oh, wow. Ooh, I like yeah. this one. There's quite mm. a bit of different Batmans you can choose, right? Um, you know, we could even go 
you can go live action you can go voice you know because obviously there's some good guys in there as well okay you know <laughs> overall i think batman actor see like this is a this is a tough one real it's a tough one for me because i always look at the actor who portrays batman and the actor that portrays bruce wayne ah okay. in my, my opinion i think michael keaton was the best batman I think he did the best job as a Batman character in the suit, just being dark, um, mm -hmm. having that persona of who he was, and especially being like Tim Burton, right? The Tim Burton era was just how Batman should have been, right? It changed out of that campy stuff that was the 66 stuff, and realistically, the um, what was it, the Justice League uh, Super Friends. So, my favorite Batman actor. If I just had to pick the Batman side, would be Michael Keaton. What about mm -hmm. you? I mean, for me, I, I, I'm not. I can't stand Tim Burton. So, um, for me, it's it's Christian Bale all day, every mm -hmm. day for for both Batman and Bruce Wayne. I felt like the perfect combination, the way he portrayed both of them. I know, like he gets a lot of shit for the I'm Batman, the voice, but like, yeah, even then, like I kind of liked it because he, you know, in Batman Begins, he's he's beginning, you know, who knows what he? It's not like everything he did there was going to be gold from Jump Street, so you know he's got to work on it and get and get to it. Um, yeah, I think Christian Bale, hands down, and honestly, I feel like anyone who comes after him just, you know, surprisingly, Ben Affleck was pretty good. Surprisingly, Ben Affleck, I kind of, I was mm -hmm. doubting it, but I, he did a pretty good job. Yeah. Okay. Kevin? Uh, you know, Nemesis, I think I'm going to have to sort of align with you on Keaton. And it's just also because it's like the first Batman I ever saw, you know? So that sort of set the bar in my mind as a young, impressionable youth. Um, and I really enjoyed it. But also Bale. I mean, I'm not just going to take the middle road here. So I'll just say Clooney. Yeah, but, of course. Uh, <laughs> just, oh, I mean, duh. I mean, I'm wearing a bright orange and half hoodie right now, so you know, you know, my guess is or yeah. my uh, answer is not going to be sane. But no, I I think that Keaton um, was just the Batman for me forever. But then when Bale was doing his thing, it was so entertaining, and I looked forward to every movie that was coming out, and I rewatched all of those a whole bunch of times. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably say Bale. Uh, but you know the the Affleck did have like the appropriate level of like self loathing, I think, mm -hmm. to <laughs> really like deliver the character. So yeah, yeah. You know what? I, hear Actually, you. I change I change my vote. I'm going with David Mazaus from Gotham, the TV show, oh. the little kid. Oh, He's the little kid. Curveball. You. Yeah, you never saw it coming, dude. You never Dang. saw it. Coming. That was a change up. I like it. The one time in costume. Final <laughs> episode, like last two minutes. Hey. Same with it's just, it's, you could say the same thing about the Smallville. You could say the same thing about Tom Welling. One time in costume, last ten minutes of the whole series. That's true. <laughs> uh, well, I guess now we're gonna have to get a Superman question at some point from Mike. <laughs> All right. Um, and our next question, actually, this is a pretty good question considering we have Kevin on here, and you know he deals with a lot of slab stuff. So this is from our buddy Noah from Broke Boy Comics. He goes mostly for older comics. If you were upgrading a slab, would you sacrifice paper quality for it? Mm. Zach, what are your thoughts? I don't know, man. I mean, honestly, it. I guess it depends. There, there's the two versions, right? Is it PC or is it selling? Um, mm -hmm. For your PC, personally, for me, I want something that presents well. I'd like the higher grade. The page quality for me isn't as important. Obviously, I don't want you know brittle or whatever it is, whatever the like the really crappy mm -hmm. one. Is. Um, yeah, but. Whether it's white, off white, that kind of—I mean, I'm—I'm I'm really obviously like off white is probably the lowest. I don't know. That's not true. It depends on how well it presents, to be honest. And then for a PC book for me, mm -hmm. so you're okay with the cream? I'm okay with that. The... It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, cream's about as low as I'll go, probably. Okay. What about you, sir, uh, Kevin? As you've been—if you've been upgrading books, you know, especially it, being it in the scene matter. of the slab, the world. Yeah, yeah, I see people doing this all day, every day upgrading their copies and you know hitting us up about page quality on stuff but i think that the uh i wouldn't take brittle because i'd be worried mm -hmm. that you know that would fall apart inside mm -hmm. the uh inside the case maybe with a little with like a hard little shake end up with a slab full of like oregano paper flakes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but i don't know like as long as the co as long as the cover presents well i really don't look at page quality myself yeah. personally because i'm not looking at the pages you know, you yeah. can see the edges. That's how I feel. Sometimes, yeah. or if the or if there's a roll, you know. So, 
if that was the case and that bothered me, I probably wouldn't get it. But that's not, that's like the last thing I probably look at on the, uh, on the labels on books that I'm checking out, I'd say. Mm. Yeah. Uh, have you guys, have you guys ever owned a brittle book? No, no. It just makes no. me nervous. Okay. I feel like I had a brittle book and I, it was definitely, I would say it was either, I can't remember at this time if it was either first Supergirl or if it was first Brainiac. It was definitely a Superman related book, but the cover was great. The colors were amazing. I just can't mm-hmm. remember. The, I, I remember I did have one brittle book in my collection and I would never, yeah. I would never downgrade from like a cream to brittle, but yeah, like if I could upgrade, let's say like we're currently, I just saw on Instagram, there was a guy selling a Hawkman four, eight, five. I have a seven, five, but mine's like pure white pages. And I think his was like off white or maybe even cream in eight, five. But I'm like, yo, a full point bump. I'm like, hell yeah, yeah I'll good. take that every day. Like it just, yeah. it's yeah. getting higher and higher in the grade. I could care less of, you know, again, you're not going to get an eight, five brittle pages, obviously, but. I'll yeah. take the page quality out of my white page seven five to get a mm-hmm. eight five like off white or whatever like pure off white I think it was it wasn't even like white to off white so but, yeah yeah that's a great question I'm sure that's something that you see constant like you said you see constantly you know especially like you buy it like I'd buy the eight five and then I'd immediately put the seven five online and maybe someone will take it quicker because ooh it's white pages right yeah no the white pages can definitely be a boon for a sale you know like if you've got something that's old that's in the page quality is real top shelf. Uh, I think that you probably, if you cruise the app and you look at a bunch of like the red dot listings that aren't like crazy red, you know, like crazy too uh, overpriced, but maybe Mm -hmm. a little bit. Sometimes it's because the seller recognizes that and that's the type of buyer they're trying to cater to, Mm. you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. uh, But yeah, I mean, page quality is not considered in any of the census stuff or not in any of the, um, you know, sales record or Mm -hmm. aggregate sales data for stuff. So, you know, it's hard to say how much that actually influences thing. I think it really tends to be mostly a personal thing. I've only run into a handful of people that they're like diehard, you know, page quality on top of everything else. Um, but if they were to get one and they're like white, you know, pure white pages, uh, they'd be pumped and they'd tell all their friends and they'd brag about it, you know? So, Mm. It's cool if it's good. If it's bad, I don't think it matters as much. You're just chopping the grade and how it presents. Oh yeah, I, I think colors colors is always the most important for me. You know, yeah, it could be do. a two, it could be a two five or a two zero book, especially like an old Silver Age, even the Golden Age, and I'm fine with like a beautiful cover that doesn't have a rip or something like. If it's a two yeah, zero because it's a two zero, either yeah, I don't know. I could care less. Crazy. Like, I, like I yeah. said, I had that first Supergirl, and my co- my page cover was just beautiful. Green, um, blue and red, like mm-hmm. the costumes, they popped, like they popped on this cover. And I was like, I don't even care if it's a two hour, two five, what it was. I was like, hell yeah. So, um, yeah. great question, Noah. That was mm-hmm. really good. I like that one as well. Uh, so, follow, follow up sort of question on that though. Like, how do you guys feel about like point fives? You know, because you have a point five of like so many varying conditions and qualities. I don't know a few people that collect specifically point fives. Oh, um, <laughs> Does auto collect point fives? That's awesome. He's a he's a coverless guy. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, Yeah, he's a coverless collector. And then sometimes I think he'll he's gotten books where he knows it's going to come back a point five just because for whatever reason. But he's fine with slabbing it like that. And I'm like, because at least it's a grade and not an NG, right? Right, Um, right. That's true. I don't know. I I think the lowest grade I've ever owned has been like the two or two point five. I've never okay. owned anything less than that, except for I had a Daredevil one, but it, it was like a 1.8. I won it in a raffle and I immediately sold Ooh. it. It really wasn't going to be for a PC book. Right. I just didn't care for Daredevil, but that's for PC stuff was definitely like a 2.0. I don't, I don't know. I, listen, a 0.5. I'll take a 0.5 Batman one. Sure. Like, oh, yeah. Need, <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Like if the cover's there and I can see it and it looks yeah, like a gold book. age book, probably. Yes. I don't know if yeah, I take exactly. a 0.5 yeah. for a silver age book, though. <laughs> definitely not a modern no. <laughs> yeah 0. Well, 0. 0.5 like, for a jim lee x-men yeah 0. 0.5 well, king in black oh, <laughs> God. And no. nailed it <laughs> not even how could you get uh, well, i'm sure there are i'm sure if you look at the census there's definitely some 0. 0.5 modern books out there for sure that's, that's what we exact, should do that's what we should yeah. do we should start we should make a 
all modern first appearances and let's make them 0.5. So like Dylan Brock 0.5, bro. No, you just you just pull 5. out like a handful of pages yeah, from dude. the inside of each just one before you send it start in. Start this new collection. Miles Morales 0.5, bitch. You know, like yeah. just, <laughs> well, just what's piss the, uh... people off, dude. What's the the Noel, which is the Venom three? Was it the second or third print for it's like his first cover appearance? Just cut out Noel point five, and then just bitch, send it in. Like yeah. <laughs> totally cut him off the cover. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, he's no longer on the cover. I must. This I put it on I my uh, people And then, oh, and then what? You, then you can really challenge all the people who like collect what you love, and then see what they think about. <laughs> it. Oh, this is what I love, dude. Collect what you love. There's no wrong way to collect. Haters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When does something get an NG? I actually don't um, know that off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't. I think if it's come, maybe if it's just cover or. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't looked yeah, yeah, to see yeah. when it's like when a book gets NG. Like if don't it's dabble just like, in that world. If it's yeah. like completely missing like a ton of pages, I yeah. think it doesn't get a grade. It, don't, it won't even hit the grade. Like there has to be a certain amount of pages, whatever. Like if it's okay. like 28 pages, it has to hit like, let's say 20. If there's like a complete wrap missing like four pages from the wrapper missing or something like that so Got it. but i don't i'm not i don't know i'm not a cgc grader nor do i look at like what the census or what they're marking you know their fee uh their grading goes their criteria that's the word I was right right for. right but cool questions everyone thanks for the community stuff um let's keep it in the community before we get into uh to kevin let's talk about baltimore comic-con um it is the in-between con from terrific con up to, to new york it is another great community show down in baltimore maryland uh, right in the right in the inner harbor, right at the Baltimore Convention Center. It's probably one of the again, and I'm an East Coast guy, so I've been to this year, but you know, I've been to Megacon, Baltimore, Terrific Con. I'm going to New York, other New Jersey type shows. Uh, it is a fantastic comic book show. You know, we we talked about it for the past year of how Terrific Con was a ter was a comic book show. It's not the big pop culture show that New York is or San Diego or even to the extent of like the mega con or like fan expo type of shows, it's comic books, man. It's art. It's, you know, writers, it's just such a good show. And the fact that yes, you know, and I had this conversation with someone, they said, Oh, is terrific con better or is Baltimore better? And I'm like, well, again, terrific con, you're all under one roof. If you all stay at Mohegan sun, but here in Baltimore, as long as you're within a one block, two block distance of anybody's hotel, you're all hanging out. Right. It's mm -hmm. an easy, yeah. it's an easy thing. Um, right. Books were books were books of plenty for sure. Um, or like I said, artists of plenty, writers of plenty, uh, great people in the community. Um, I really have no qualms with Baltimore. Uh, I've been going to Baltimore for God, this is probably my sixth time going. I love Baltimore because they brought oh, this wow. year they brought back the on site grading, which is always cool. It's tough to have find a con that the CGC wants to do on site grading, so that's Did you always use it a good thing. I didn't. Because I didn't really have any Silver Age books to do. Like, yeah. I would only go down. Well, I would bring either Silver Age books that take forever through normal CGC, or I would do like high value. And I mean like high value modern books. Like I remember I did like my first Harley Quinn. Um, I think I did like a some, like I think I did like Killing Joke one, like first print and first Bane. Like those are like higher books that I don't want to wait on. Like I'm like, let me just do this on site. It's it, it's quick and easy. So, um. Kevin, you've been doing short, short box has been going there for a while. You know, what's, yeah. you know, what's like the setup like for you guys, you know, what's the overall, you know, consensus of, you know, going to Baltimore? Well, it tells you something that it's one of the only three shows during the year now that we do the booth at, you know, Baltimore heroes and San Diego currently. And I mean, pound for pound Baltimore is just one of the best shows for comics. And that's, you know, that's what we care about, what I end up spending the most of my time in. <clears throat> At any point during the show, when you're wandering the floor, you can just stop and make a 360. And as far as the eye can see, there's comics on racks in booths with crowds shopping each booth. There's no yeah. real dead space. It's not an overly packed convention, which is really nice. Um, and the area is great. Seafood's awesome. Um and as far as just like the sense of community, like you said, uh, everyone's hanging out all the time, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes even in multiple groups, a block away from each other. It's a, uh, it's a spectacular show. If you're looking to find cool books and meet real, a lot of really awesome creators, I think that's, you know, just like heroes, that's what Baltimore's got going for it. Um, Baltimore is a little bit, you know, of a different town. 
uh, it's not yeah. it's not a place where you're gonna like just like go wander the streets and checking out neighborhoods uh, in the evening and stuff like that. But um, I've had no problems at Baltimore. I've been there the last three years, and uh, everyone's been just absolutely lovely. Yeah, and you guys have been set up in the same spot every year, right? You guys are always yeah. That tends kind of to be that. those big like tent pole shows. They they tend to just like let you renew at the end of the show for the next year in the same spot. Mm -hmm. um so we just have had our spots secured i mean it's that way too at like san diego and stuff like that mm -hmm. cool nice yeah Zach? in fact like people will get a booth locked down in san diego and then they're like oh i'm a little older i don't want to do this anymore and they sub lease their booth to <laughs> new dealers that want to spot at the show like it's it's pretty interesting yeah that's a good idea i know that's a lot of what like they do like for bad. new york same thing like people will buy they'll have like their giant section and then they'll split it up in between you know, instead of having one giant long aisle, they'll have three people, you know, set up instead of one. Right. So can't bring uh, so I mean, especially going to New York, it's crazy. So but Zach, what do you yeah. think of Baltimore? You had a good time? Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was really cool. It was it was um I agree with what Kevin said. It, it and honestly it was kind of underwhelmed might be the word I'm looking for when like because you were like, Yeah, it's gonna get really packed on Saturday. And I actually didn't really feel like it was that packed on Saturday. I mean, I've been to, I've never been in New York, but I've been to San Diego multiple times and <laughs> that's yeah. really packed. Um, that's packed. Yeah. So I wasn't like, well, I was like, oh, this isn't too bad at all. Um, and it's just, it's really big. It's kind of a weird, I did kind of find the, um, the convention center a little strange at times, like the way it's like designed and everything. And like, it's almost like a star in a weird way or like a V. Cause you had all the things way back in the back where like the um, like the celebrities were and the, like the artist, I guess you call it an artist. I, was, I don't know if I call it artist alley because you had artist alley kind of over here. You had kind of split up. I guess you had like your top tier writer creators, yeah. creators alley. And then you had like your artist alley. Um, and then you had that kind of stretched out and then you had that whole back video game area. And then there was a huge like where all the like, I don't want to say all the food because there wasn't like a ton of food, but like that huge area. So it was really kind of really big um mm -hmm. like in terms of space and uh and maybe that also kind of lent me towards the idea that it wasn't super crowded because you could go to you could easily go somewhere and get like room right you can't do that in san diego oh, <laughs> there's yeah. no there's no place like there's <clears throat> no you're lucky if you get a wall to like sit down on or something in san diego but, <laughs> um no i really liked it i thought it was cool you know lots of comics um lots of lots of games there was a lot of video games as well too which was pretty cool not that i'm like in the hunt form but i like to look at them and stuff and uh tons of oa i mean maybe i'm just more cued into that now because that's what you're kind of hunting and i'm following around you and i'm kind of looking at it with you and stuff but um yeah man i thought it was a really great con i thought it was cool it's, I, I liked how it was set up i mean for the most part it was fun it was fun yeah so yeah, it's I, like I only go to cons for one thing. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm like, I'm really not buying anything. Like, I buy like one or two things. I'm only going to hang out. And yeah. I'm more interested. Like, I'd be happy going for two or three hours and then going back to the room, catching a quick nap and like just crushing beers and waiting for people. Like, I'm more like, what are we doing when it's over? You know, that's, yeah. that's what I'm there for. Yeah. So, but it's fun, man. No, I mean, that's, and that's another good thing about Baltimore. It's like you can literally, you know, we did it several times where we walked around the showroom floor we went back to the hotel um you had to take a shower or something or you yeah. just relax and then you go back out and it's, it's the same thing like terrific the same way you go back up to the hotel you hang out you do your thing you know it's easy to leave the show get some food come back um but i do like how they have it set up where like all the big name and i don't want to say like big name but yeah like the a-list people right. are in on one side that's the truth yeah. because you know what it, that's especially like New York is like that and other shows is like they'll have some A-list artist or writer in between, you know, other people who are, this could be their first show and their line is just engulfed and it's kind of taking over like this person's booth that's next to them. And like, they don't, they don't separate it quite as well. So I think Baltimore does the best job because if you don't even want to deal with all these like high end, whether they're old school artists or writers or, yeah. you know, the flavor of the week or the modern guy and you want to, get into like the indie stuff you know like um john our buddy john brugman is an artist you got carmen costello who is a writer he was in there you know you got a lot of people like that that you wouldn't be able to po possibly stand and go by because of the fact that there's these giant 
you know, like if it's like a Tom King or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, who else was in there? Like, you know, the Walt Simonsons and, and like Great other people. But, but yeah, exactly. And then you have those other guys that are on the far side. Like literally there's, they're all over. They, they have all these sides, whether it's the writers or artists. That's why I love Baltimore. Cause no matter where you walk, whether you went, you walked in, you went to the right, you had artists and writers, you walk all the way back. You had them, you walked to the left. You already had them. That's what's yeah. such a cool setup about Baltimore. And you know what? And you guys, a lot of people don't know this, but Baltimore Convention Center has a whole other side where there was a whole other convention going on that you didn't even know, like at the same yeah. time. Like it you wouldn't even realize it. was huge. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and like Zach was saying how it's just weird shaped. Like you'll be looking, you'll be like, oh, this is the whole show. And then you walk past that concrete column where it yeah. takes the sharp L to the side and the show's like double the size. Right. Uh, it is kind of odd, but you could get from end to end in that show in like no time flat. Like it's crazy to me compared yeah. to, I mean, talking about San Diego, take Dude. you a literal, talk about Megacon, take you like a half hour to get from your booth to the bathroom and back just walking, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. So Baltimore is way more spread out and, and I think a little well, more well-designed like that. And, and it gives it the sense of being kind of an intimate show when you don't see that whole other like half of it that's around the concrete corner so oh true yeah and it's a, it's yeah. a great show just like yeah like you said especially the i mean shit you've gone you know if you've gone to new york it's like hey i'm up at the floor and then if you got to get down the artist alley like now where they have it it's a 45 minute gotta, walk sometimes you gotta take the sky bridge and go through another building and down an escalator <laughs> and oh, then pay yeah. the troll for the I'm already annoyed by it i haven't even been there yet <laughs> yeah it's that is one of the you know after going to terrific con in this show i'm just like Man, I'm like I don't want to. I don't want to go to New York, but it's like it's my hometown show type of way. Like I, I go every year. You see different people yeah. because that's what it is. I, you know, like Zach said earlier, you different people go to different shows, yeah. right? Like there's certain yeah. people that don't go to New York that only go to Baltimore or only go to Terrificon or, you know, and that's right. Right. Like, yeah. It's it's cool. New York's you a monster to see different show, people. man. I only yeah. did it the one year I started with the company, but it was it was a really cool experience. I prefer the San Diego for, you know, as far as the two big shows, but maybe that's just because the travel out there from Portland is really hard. Mm. Um, but yeah, New York, like the city doesn't sleep too. So like you could, it just feels like one long day, you know, yeah. whole five day weekend. It's just like one long day. I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of looking forward to that because <laughs> after cool. that, that's, that's what, that's what time, I'm about. So. Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah. And then after like terrific on man, I love terrific on so much, but then they stopped serving beer at like 2 a.m. Oh, that wasn't a good look. I was like, you what? Need to I'm ready to go to bed. Jeez. So, <laughs> oh, God, well, geez. Well, you, like, thank God you're only there two days. Cause I don't know if I'll be able to handle you for four days. If, if that, oh, yeah, you I don't dude. I'm so I'm old. I can't do four days anymore. <laughs> I just max out on two and then roll out. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so what's the, what's the coolest thing that you guys got at the show? I mean, you know, mine is this cool hoodie that I'm oh, wearing, yeah. but what, what did you guys get that you were super pumped on? What did I pick up? Yeah, Zach, did you pick up anything? You know what? Yeah, I picked, I mean, I bought the, I bought a book from Jeff, but I think the coolest thing I picked up was the, uh, the stray dogs, uh, oh commission from trish she did my dog havoc put oh i was gonna say is up. that trish that looks like trish yeah That's great. so she did it and, and bro with the price and the color i mean she colored it that was crazy um yeah trish was, she's also one of the coolest freaking people you yeah, guys should just really cool. should interview her she'd be a great one yeah 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 we were we were talking to her you know, i know she yeah. jumped on brian's show last night um and they were showing off a lot of the sketches and stuff and um yeah, yeah i had trish do a um a loath cat from star wars rebels so i sent that over to cgc um but if people have been following me on instagram i mean my my big thing was buying the mandalorian one page one issue one. <laughs> oh man one. oh I I saw like, your post. That's, all right. that's right hell yeah what? dude who was the dude you bought like like five pages from that was the guy that was um, him. yeah yeah carl story he's the anchor to chris sprouse and um Ryan Jetty. So Jetty was the he's the penciler for Mandalorian and a couple other he did Mandalorian. He did a couple issues of High Republic and he did some of the other directs from like uh, the Disney Plus shows to comic book stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. So he had a bunch of covers for Star Wars, which believe me, if I had some deep pockets and didn't have certain characters on covers, I probably would have picked up a cover or two. But he said this was his second show with all this art 
his first show was Heroes Con. And yeah. the way it's set up is, you know, he'll he him and Chris or who or Jetty, they split, you know, they'll split the pages. Like it'll be like a two for one. So like, you know, Chris would take two, he gets one. And then, you know, they kind of like, Oh, do you really want this page? Oh, I really like this page. Oh, you okay with I take this one. And he lucked out and he got Mandalorian issue one, page one. And the fact that like this is the second show and nobody took that page, I was like, What? But like, the fools. Yeah. Fools, you people are. <laughs> like, fools, fools. So yeah, that's definitely I, I I'm it's already at Michael's. It's getting professionally framed. Like it's getting the treatment. Is, huh? Yeah, man. It's it's the st- he's not on it like because it's page one, so he's walking with the little beeper looking for his bounty. Right. Issue uh page two is in the like the cantina that he shows up, and then page three is a splash page where you see him full body with the armor, and I'm pretty yeah. sure the uh the penciler kept that page and maybe he's selling it i'm pretty sure carl didn't have it but the fact that this is the starting of this journey of you know yeah, yeah. jarn's journey like how how has nobody else wanted this i was like this is awesome like this is a key moment in his in the mandalorian's career so the first thing That's we see rad, on dude. i know Disney you're a big Club. fan so i'm pumped that you got that <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, people already hit me up in DMs. They're like, oh, dude, you don't sell me that piece. You know, what, what do you want for it? And I'm like, nah, bro, it's mine. Get the f- out of here. Yeah, <laughs> double, triple, triple, triple. Get out of here. No, that's um, that's the problem with the FU price. Then somebody takes it and then it's more like FU, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but before we get into some other stuff, um, talk about Shortbox, there's, we got to bring up a few things. So in Baltimore, we've now learned that Two, there are several people that think Zach and I are brothers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. When we were, it was the, we were with real brothers, the Reese brothers. And they're like, so you guys are brothers? We're like, no, not at all. <laughs> you guys are like, what are you talking yeah. about? What well, quit like, projecting on us, your brotherhood. Yeah. <laughs> like, this guy's Irish. I'm Italian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, who are, who are <laughs> our parents? Like, <laughs> maybe adopted brothers. Yeah. I guess because we, we were pretty we, tall. We all looked at, do we all look the same? What's going on here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's this? Well, unfortunately, it was all white dudes. So, you know, it was all white guys telling us we look alike, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I thought that was pretty funny. And then uh, if you, for the people that listened to last week's episode, and we had this, con- Zach and I had this conversation where we recorded outside of Pickles. We're like, mm. man, um, there's probably going to be a homeless guy at some point that's going to walk up to us and ask us for money or sit down next to us. And literally 25 minutes into us recording this, some gentleman decided to sit down next to Zach and watch the football game from outside pickles. And we were like, there's a point where Zach, I think you, you even say, you're like, well, we talked about this. It was going to happen. And for the <laughs> final, like five minutes, people, there was a gentleman sitting next to Zach, just talking out loud. <laughs> just talking about, oh, the, oh yeah, oh, go, 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 good job. Well, great, great play, 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 play calling, blah, 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 blah. blah. And there's like so <laughs> commentating. And I was like, who is this dude? And I think when he first showed up, if you listen to it, you can see me get or hear me. Is that kind of night? Not get flustered, but I'm like, wait. Uh, so I we're doing this? Are we, are we just gonna, yeah, yeah. Are you doing this? <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Could have asked him what he thought about last week's yeah. comic books and oh, new releases. You, uh, what were your recent reads, pal? <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. But yeah, uh, there's that, and I I I found this funny. You you had left at this point, but so on Saturday when you left. Mm-hmm. and i was still in the hotel i took a shower and i changed and i came back down and several people noticed that i actually changed my entire outfit which i think is a little strange that people knew like what i was wearing to what i changed into because like i walked up to an artist booth and he's like weren't you wearing something different earlier and i go why yes i was i actually went back to the hotel and showered and changed but i find that very weird that like people noticed like that i actually changed my outfit I hate to break it to you, man, but you're a tall drink of water. People kind of just notice you. <laughs> so I think. Well, and maybe wasn't... maybe you were wearing something super dapper before, and they're like, this is twice as dapper, or they were just like, this is a different dapper. I'm pretty sure it was just the quality of your clothes that they were calling out. I guess. I, I know. I was. Pro- you know why? Because I was probably <laughs> projecting on Saturday my short box shirt that I was wearing and sweating in yeah, it. Yeah, boy. And I was like, maybe I need to no, change it. must be it. nice to have one of those. Why don't you have one of those, you goof? You ask me, you tell me why I don't have one. Of those. I don't know. Uh, 
because I have to send you one. Is that that the, my, I mean, that's how that's things work. That too. All right. Yeah. We'll take care of that. Take care of that. Put them on the <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing one of your shirts. So yeah, I, I know. One is, oh, no. I thought oh, you yeah. had one. I, that's totally on me, I guess. But write that down. Write that down. Write it down. Take a note. A large. Oh, yeah. So uh, overall, great show for, you know, just, every, yeah, you know, again, for Baltimore. So um, let's kind of let's kind of move. Let's move forward out of the Baltimore talk. Let's get into some short box stuff. So people that don't know, you know, again, Kevin's been on here several times. We've talked about the short box app um, this year. They did start auctions, um, you know, and I was able to, you know, in the beginning of the year, I was able to do a couple auctions with short box. I had a very seamless process, very easy, um, you know, and Kevin's helped me walk through a lot of things and it was absolutely perfect. And I guess tell the people, you know, Kevin, like where you guys have beginnings of the auctions to where you guys are now like what are you doing like just gonna yeah. go through the yeah, process yeah. <clears throat> so the auction started as like a send us your stuff um we qualified a little bit of it we didn't want to be selling you know dollar books that way but um we we were started with graded that's how we've always sort of run it you know the app started with selling graded before we added raw and our auctions that we were running initially were only with graded books and it was where people sent them into us we get them uh, listed and sold uh and it, the app, the auctions have all the same info you've come to know and love from Shortbox, stuff like fair market values and historical sales and information like that. That really helps sort of, you know, get your book for the right price. And um, just the smash success, we started doing these auctions and we're planning to, you know, do like one a week or one, a couple a month. And like within two or three weeks, we had like three or four a week uh going and so it's been it's been a wild ride uh i've been very very busy over the last you know few months while this has been going on and i'm loving it i'm just being able to work with so many new sellers in a different kind of way to sell their things uh has just been really satisfying so uh currently we have a few op options available for people that want to participate in auctions uh you can still send your books in for consignment if they're over I think the current range is like 250 to 500 plus it used to be a little less, but as we've grown, you know, we just want to focus on the sending in stuff for the higher value stuff. So, uh, 250 and up, you know, people can consign or submit the consignment request directly in the app. You just tap on your book, tap on send to auction, and then there's a button there for consignment. Um, and then there's the new thing, which is like flavor of the year, I'll call it, uh, community auctions. We now have the various themes and, uh, yeah, I guess just themed and um, minimum value auctions that are up in the app that people can also go and take their books from the account, submit it to this on this community auction where they don't have to send the books to us at headquarters. So it saves them a little bit of money and some time and all of that. And then uh, the community auctions run for a few days. And then once the bidding closes, they you know get the shipping labels and send the books out to the, the winners. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're just trying to, we're slowly getting closer and closer to just like person to person auctions and things like that. Um, it's been blowing up, man. I mean, we've got, uh, we're still, still going to do some really fun curated ones, like a golden age auction every month, um, a select auction every quarter or every month. I'm not super clear on that. Uh, the select auction is actually up right now, and that's for books that people could send in that were uh, $1,000 or more fair market, and that's going to run for a full week. Uh, so get in there and check it out. It's not a ton of stuff, but we also have the very first PSA slab up oh, wow. in that auction as yeah. well. So yeah, we saw it. Uh, we saw it at the con. Yeah, it was, it's a like, brick, man. Brick, it's, it's, yeah, cool. yeah, man. <laughs> it's, it's a beefy boy. What but, was the um, book again? What was in it? It was like a Spider-Man Venom something gold kith. Uh, yeah, that's right. kit sneakers thing. It was like some prototype that they did in collaboration with PSA when they released their shoes at San Diego. Yeah. Um, the, one of the raffle winners was a short box user and came by and just sort of let us hold on to it and show it off at shows. And now we're going to sell it for them. See, see how it does. Maybe set a new, you know, they don't really track uh, PSA sales on GPA or anything, but, you know, starting to contribute to the sales, uh, grand record of PSA slabs. So it's going to be kind of fun. So you, you've um, been doing the nine months of auctions, you know, what's been like your favorite theme? Cause you know, you guys have been coming, you know, pumping out themes, whether it's again, like the, there's the normal golden age, silver age, but like what's been like the most fun stuff that you've been able to find and see. 
I've really been digging like the pre-code horror and the Bronze Age horror ones. I mean, mm. those covers are just so weird. I really, I really like working with the Golden Age ones because those are just books that you don't really see ever. You know, you might see them in a booth at a show, but like you never really get a chance to interact with them much. Um, in fact, at Baltimore, I was able to scoop up like 15 pulps, graded pulps from a dealer that we are having go up in the Golden Age sale that's starting early next month. And I'm really excited to see how those do. I mean, there's mm. it's just that's that's paper that's already over 100 years old. I think one yeah. of the cool ones I was looking at was like 1922. And that's mind blowing that it's like a four or five and a whatever page quality. And it's like still, still around, yeah. uh, it just kind of rocks me. So, uh, yeah, I really, I really like the golden age and the older, weirder esoteric stuff. I'm a huge fan of like the Spider-Man themes and the Batman themes. Those just always do super well. Um, right now it's just been a lot of experimenting with different themes to see what sticks and then sort of replicating that. And I think, you know, like we had a lot of success with the, uh, mm -hmm. $50 minimum starting bid uh, graded auction or community auction that we did. So we'll probably like, you know, repeat some of those old themes that worked really well. Um, and I think the one of the last themed consignment auctions, because the themed auctions are probably going to move all to community because they've just been doing great on their own. They don't people need don't need to send us books. They have been shipping them out. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate you. Um, so one of the very last themes we've got coming up is for Venom around the release of the movie later oh, in October. Okay, cool. So if anyone's listening and they want to, you know, send some books in that are 150 plus for Venom, just uh, holler at your boy. And uh, yeah, I think and those nothing are changes fun. right for the the between the auctions and if you sold on the app, it's still the 10 percent flat fee, it's right? Still it's 10%. not like. Fees don't people change. People aren't losing any money. People aren't gaining nope. any extra doing it a different way. It's the same way. Yeah. It's the same process. Well, initially, you know, the consignment had a few things over the community where it was like we put it in like a consistent regular spot every week for the sale. It ran for multiple days. When we started community auctions, there was a bunch of, we were just doing 24 hour, you know, 24 hour auctions. And We've decided that we need to do, you know, at least two to three days for most auctions in order to get the appropriate amount of bids in either that or have a minimum, you know, because yeah. the problem is like people are super pumped and they go in, like get a couple $1 sales and they're not as pumped. <laughs> they're way less likely to come back and keep participating in auctions. And honestly, dollar sales suck for everybody, no matter what platform you're on. Right. It always yeah. costs more to generate a shipping label than it does for anybody to make money on that. Yeah. So we're trying to work out ways to make it a little better for the, uh, for the cons or for the people that are submitting to community things like i mentioned already like the starting minimum bids uh mm -hmm. we've got a lot of those coming up just go check them out we've got the themes which are always really nice they draw the right type of buyer in um and we're experimenting with different like start and end times just you know it's all a learning process like i said we started out planning due to one a month and now we're at like two auctions ending a day yeah so go figure <laughs> and you can see the the uh, the theme stuff you could always find on the newsletter, right? On the the weekly yep. short box newsletter to see like what's the bit like again like the community stuff is always happening. Um, mm -hmm. Seller spotlights are always happening, but when yeah. you're doing these big theme auctions, those come on the weekly short box. You know, those those have those have newsletter. traditionally come in the newsletters and stuff. Where you know as we move the themes more to community style, it'll just be something where you'll want to go look at the auction section to see what sort of themes are coming up. I mean, that's actually the way you asked that question is some is some good feedback on that we need to like sort of figure out how we're going to let people know what's coming up for the themes. But mm -hmm. the crazy thing, Justin, is that like we had a Punisher auction that mm -hmm. there was like a little technical foobar and when we set it up that was preventing anybody from submitting. Mm -hmm. And I had a seller reach out. I was like, hey, I can't submit to this. There's no books in it. What's going on? We got that fixed. The auction went live the next day and there's like 60, 70 books in there. So, I mean, yeah. like the, the, the need or the desire to sell books in these community auctions is definitely there. Yeah. Uh, when we first started doing them, we couldn't come up with new ones fast enough because people were just like, how do I submit? All the auctions are full. It's like, so we'll continue to like grow the size and until there's some sort of negative pushback and then we'll adjust. And that's just sort of the way that we, we figure out what works best for everybody.
So nice. Everything everyone's doing is really helping us figure it out. So I appreciate you guys. <laughs> we're we're all the guinea pigs. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I mean, we said it before. Like every time we have, every time we have it on, have you on here, and you talk about short boxes, it's just really cool how how much short box keeps like evolving and at like a I don't use this word like derogatorily but like like at a methodical yeah. pace like you do you guys take your time oh, yeah. you're not like rushing into it you're like you know what let's right. let's dip in here slowly let's work out the kinks let's let's kind of explore not like hey let's jump in here and this is cool and this is cool and this is cool and this is cool and then it all like kind of falls apart or something or doesn't yeah. play out like you know I think well, people we're messing with people's that. money you know like you yeah. can't you can't do too much you can't do something that will they'll just break it right we, we we can push to that point but um you know we need to make sure that our users first and foremost are taken care of mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so Thanks um for i I, for I hear that there's going to be a seller spotlight community auction Ooh. sometime in uh, mid-october by some brothers yeah well brothers? actually let me let me talk about that real quick because i don't don't think i actually even mentioned that the we so within the community auctions there's this variant we all love a good variant don't we mm -hmm. there's a variant of the community auction called the hosted auction uh, and you've probably seen these if you're using the app if you're not get in there and check it out the nice thing about hosted auctions is that is a single seller or maybe in some cases two sellers um <laughs> and then the uh what the big benefit of that is that the buyers get combined shipping on everything you know you buy 10 books out of this auction you're gonna pay for one shipping charge on that invoice which is like a massive motivator so these these hosted auctions are really cool we uh, we work with our sellers to get them set up with like, you know, some cool branding on it, give them a date that it's going to go live. They load a bunch of books in there and then boom, you get in there, you start bidding. They do have the option to add a, a minimum starting bid on things, which is uh, something that's a benefit of community. We don't do that in the curated auctions currently, like the golden age and the select are all starting at a dollar. Um, they're gonna, they're the not going to end at a dollar. Let's be real. They're folks. definitely not going to end at a dollar. Yeah, we've got some. Do we have some massive books in that one? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think that uh, Spider-Man One Platinum Edition Nine Eight is in there. Wow. That was, that was the one that we had on the wall at Baltimore. But um, I digress. The hosted auctions are just a spectacular way for one seller to get a whole massive boatload of sales within like a few short days. The auctions run for you know two days, three days. And um, they can list like 50 to 100 books in there currently. Um, and, and then we will grow that as well. It's just, you know, I'm sure you being a seller, you know that having to ship 100 orders in a couple of days is a lot of orders. So um, we're just working with people to make sure that they're set up for success and aren't shipping for like a month and a half afterwards. So, yeah. And, uh, and segue into that, we do have an upcoming hosted community auction that we are putting on the books. Uh, I don't have my notes in front of me, what date we said, but we'll be doing some advertising about it. Uh, we're going to be doing a comic com podcast hosted yeah. auction. Oh, with your boys are here. we now? Yes, we are. Fancy, Thank fancy. you, Kevin. Be Thank fun, you for the yeah. segue. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to look really bad if I don't follow through on this. Guy. <laughs> no. so, yeah, here. we'll be. So, uh, yeah. So again, people, it's a free app. Shortbox is a free app. You don't have to use it just for us. But, you know, as Kevin said, we, uh, Zach and I are going to be doing our first uh, community hosted auction. Um, it is going to start on October the 12th. It's going to be a three day auction. So October 12th through the 14th, it's going to be books that are going to be combined from my collection and stuff from Zach. So you're going to see a variety of stuff. You're going to see you know, <clears throat> I'll tell you right now, I mean, I'm going to throw some Star Wars in there. I'll throw some Something is Killing the Children, some variants. You don't say. You know, it could be a little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars, Surprise! what? Yeah. Um, you know, Zach, why don't you tease out what you're going to be throwing? Yeah, I mean, no, no surprise either. You're probably going to see some some early, early Ghost Riders, some Marvel Comics Presents, some, uh, or sorry, Marvel Spotlight, some Ghost Rider, um, some Slabs, some various things. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, I guess 40 to 50 items. Um, you know, again, we'll, we'll have it curtailed. Uh, we'll definitely be sending out the links. You know, you'll see it. We'll be promoting it for the next few weeks until, um, you know, we get it all situated. But, you know, I think this could be a fun thing. And, you know, um, like I said earlier, I, I've used the short box. I've been using the short box app, you know, for quite a long time. Uh, I've done a few of the themed auctions with with Kevin and it's been a lot of fun. And I you know, we had this conversation in Baltimore and this is what happens. You, you have conversations in the community and they just kind of work their ways. And 
yeah. you know, I think this was a perfect way for uh, Zach and I to kind of join forces on uh, on selling some books. And, you know, we look forward yeah. to doing this. And we may do this, you know, once a month. You may see the, the Comic-Con yeah. podcast we're rolling that's, through books. So That's the fun part, you know, as like I was saying before, as we grow this out, like right now we have two auctions ending a day. You know, maybe eventually we'll grow to the point where we could do three a day. Uh, you know, so there's, there's literally so many slots for people to come to us and do their own hosted auction if they feel ready or if they have any questions about it. Um, so that's, you know, that's literally my day in day out nowadays is just getting people set up on hosted stuff and, and managing the auction flow. So if you guys have any questions about it, you're listening to this, just reach out. We'll get you set up with your very own hosted auction and maybe make it a thing. Cool. I actually have already had a few sellers that are doing on like their third sale. Wow. So sweet. Yeah. Awesome working out well um i appreciate kevin for coming on here yeah, um man. let's kind of move into some articles real quick before we get out of here um let's kind of kick us off with a, a very interesting article from a publisher that you know we've talked about over the past few years and how they've been losing certain licenses and how they're changing their views um zach do you want to take this one yeah sure so from bleeding cool idw to publish its own superhero bible mafia <clears throat> and serial killer comics so IDW generally publishes two lines of comic books, those that have licensed from a property owner, everything from Monster High to Star Trek, Godzilla to Sonic, with the creators working for hire. And then there are the ones that are co-owned by the creators of the comic book, which IDW then publishes with a variable degree of media exploitation control on the contract. Now it seems that IDW wants to look more into publishing comic books that are work for hire from the creator, but that the publisher actually owns themselves. So earlier in the week, the CEO and publisher of IDW Davidi Jonas took an investment call while driving, in which he said that he wants to create a greater value in the IP that IDW develops. So they own their own characters and universes like Marvel and DC do. He says, I believe we have a tremendously talented team of great storytellers. And for us to, to focus on developing our own wholly owned IP as a long-term investment that will create huge value in the underlying portfolio for our shareholders. So some of the ideas they're coming across are a new line of superheroes and a superhero universe. A re this, this one's really interesting to me. A retelling of biblical characters and stories set in the modern era with modern storyline, but kind of borrowing from the stories of antiquity. So Davidi Jonas believes that they can reach a whole new audience and bring the talent tent of the comic industry and mesh it with the religious community, which is a large book buying community. He continued just seeing the success of religious cinema, a huge element of growth. And then finally, they're also going to look at a focus on crime, serial killers, and mafia families. So, you know, it's very interesting because you are seeing, um, obviously, Marvel and DC, right? They have, they've always had their own, like, library of connected universe. I mean, th those are the ones, right? And then even Image, you know, has kind of, even when they even when they started, they were supposedly, you know, Savage Dragon, Spawn, had these, like, little crossovers, kind of, really. But what you're really seeing more, like, the the massive verse things like the radiant black and the uh rogue sun and um all those ones that kind of like are actually part of a whole universe and then now we, we're seeing it as well with the uh the jeff john stuff like rook exodus and uh red coat and all that stuff so the ghost machine stuff so you are seeing these little pocket universes in image and so now even well, hell even boom studios kind of with something is killing the children right they're they're branching out a little bit you know mm -hmm. with like the house of slaughter and the book we got the book of slaughter coming out new or no what's the new one coming out um yeah it's, uh, books of slaughter i think it's book book, of slaughter. books of slaughter yeah okay so yeah so they're kind of building out their <laughs> own universe as well but so it's interesting to see idw kind of like turn the corner and do this as well um i think it's fun i think it's awesome i mean honestly i, I i'm a i would be a reader of like biblical stories like that, those are like that's kind of like a supernatural type story, you know, in a way, like all the things, like mm -hmm. destiny, stuff like that. I mean, it's mm -hmm. all tied into religious. So I think that's really interesting. And it's really funny that they kind of like focused on that. Right. Like, I mean, there's, it's almost like the other ones are toss aways, right? Like, Oh, superhero, superhero universe, oh, focus yeah. crimes, hero killers, mafia families, and then the Bible, you know? <laughs> so it's like, they really flesh <laughs> yeah. that out. So there's something to that. So, um, I'm interested. Kevin. Yeah. There's there's some weird spec spec specificity in yeah. the in the stuff that they chose. Like you said, it's like it's not like religious stories, you know, the yeah. world over. It's like Bible. Right, Bible. right, right. So and then and then the and then like just 
I don't know if it's just the wording, but mafia families like just a weird like why does it have to be the families it's a very specific that said i'm super open for this i think it's yeah. long overdue idw has done great with the ip stuff that they've had but they've never really caught on with the fans like what i would say their most comparable publisher maybe i mean don't shoot me for this but like boom you yeah. know they've no, seen yeah. the success of boom and the books Dark they've Horse been putting out I mean, something scaling the children is freaking massive. Yeah, like yeah. for books to spawn like eight print, you know, eight printings of issue of issues that aren't even like in the first ten is is crazy to me. So I think that IDW just, you know, they want a slice of the pie, and rightly so. You know, they put out good quality stuff. I feel like maybe they could uh, take this opportunity to like improve some of the paper quality that they print on. Um, but yeah, overall, like I'm super super down for it. I think that the uh, the Bible one's kind of weird. I don't know how to feel about that. I grew up, in, you know, in a religious home when I was younger, and I don't. I'm not practicing nowadays, but I'd be interested to check it out. It depends on if it'd be like just some cheesy like Bible comic you'd see in the, you know, at the dentist office or in the <laughs> lobby of the church, or if it's like actually got something compelling that ends up getting attached to an optioned IP. It's kind of weird to me. Right? Like, yeah. What's that? It sounds like it's it's more themed, like right, like they say. He said, yeah. that, like, uh, the, oh gosh, where was I moved on? Stories of antiquity and stuff like that. And kind of, yeah, borrowing from it in a modern era with a modern storyline. So, I mean, that's cool. You know, I mean, yeah, re reimagine that stuff, man. Yeah. That's an old ass text. You know, might right. be time yeah. <laughs> you want to get new people reading and getting into that stuff, then do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, and then the whole, the whole like very specific call out that's like due to the success of religious cinema, like you know, which so, ones? So, so yeah, I think. Much. So yeah. I think honestly, if it comes from that, um, I feel like they're talking about like things that are done, like the chosen. You're, you guys, um, I know Justin doesn't, but like, um, have you ever heard of the, or heard of or watched the chosen TV show? It's wildly popular. It's about Jesus and like the apostles. Um, no, there's no. four. Do, honestly, bro, and I'm not even. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up. I'm Catholic. I'm not like a hardcore practicing Catholic or anything, but yeah. this is arguably one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life it's yeah man i'll check that out That's it cool. is amazing like it's really like not to yeah. like tangent here but it's about it's more it's kind of more about the apostles than it is really about jesus but it's during that time frame like leading up to the crucifixion and everything and there's right. been four seasons and you kind of get a real focus on each apostle um yeah but more than anything it's it's funny too like jesus is like one of the bros <laughs> like it's like <laughs> he's like teasing them and like messing with them and ribbing on them and stuff and you're just it's honestly kind of probably like you know, you read the Bible and you're like, well, this is really stiff. It's kind of like, obviously, it's the Bible. Right, but, right, right. But you think about it. Like, if you were to think about it, like, hey, what do you think it was like? This one guy who knew he had the shoulders, like, the whole world was on his shoulders. And he had was 12 dudes were with him. You know, they were just oh, like roaming around the countryside. Too, you know, yeah. like, they're definitely giving each other a hard time and having yes. fun. And there's, and there's yeah. rivalry between them. Like, there's, you know, they're all kind of like, they're, they're, they're human, right? And so they're all trying yeah. to, like vie for his attention to be like the main one and are, are they better are they lacking well it's dude um every episode That's interesting, is like man yeah tough to check that out it's what's it's it on powerful what's so it? it's kind of moved around a lot um, okay it started off on oh man what was it called i don't know the platform it started off on they moved on you can get it like it's, you can find it on amazon prime okay. right now i think but they also then it's like they have their own distributor now they've moved their there's like a chosen app um mm. Which interesting, interesting enough, they had they're coming out with like the book of Moses. They're doing um, the book of Joseph, like J Jesus' father. They're doing their own kind of like spinoff stuff. But damn, so this is like a whole thing, man. Like I, I didn't even realize that this was going on. I've been so out of yeah. the church for so long. Like I went, to a, I went to a Christian high school when I was younger, so like I had to take Bible classes for four years. So Let me I mean, find... that's interesting to me from a literary standpoint, at the very least. But. So it first started, I know we're kind of going off on, but we're talking about the Angel Studios. That's the studio that's kind of like okay. done. They did, um, they also did that, uh, um, the human trafficking movie with uh, Jim Caviezel that recently came out, um, Sound of Freedom. Yes. So oh, yeah, Angel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Angel Studios is completely like a Christian. They do Christian themed films. Like that's what Got they it. do. And it's kind of like, like jumped off. There's, there's, un, I mean, there's a lot of popularity around it right now. So. Hmm. I think that's might be what they're referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it sounds like it. I didn't even know it was such a big its own little pocket universe. I, they should have just said the the Bible pocket universe. The Bible multiverse, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Oh, Bible you never know who might show up, dude. Moses, <laughs> check it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Was coming yeah. on his ship, bro. 
Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm down for like a modern telling of like the Tower of Babel. Shit, yeah, like that'd be dope. Like, come on, yo, if they do Old Testament stuff in comic book form, that would just basically read like weird jungle action or something. You know, like, Adam and Gamora could be like literally something that happens in like the Avengers, dude. Adult content yeah. not allowed on the short box app. True. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do suggest it, like randomly, since we're talking about it, man. I highly suggest people checking out the Chosen. It is fantastic. Right. Yeah, I mean, it sounds it sounds like it's entertaining to say the least. So yeah, I'll give it I'll give it a little check and I'll I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. Cool. Cool. So yeah, I think IDW is definitely going to be moving in a different direction. They've obviously seen what these other IPs are doing or these other publishers are doing, and yeah, they've kind of lost their way. You know, again, we we talk yeah. about it losing losing GI Joe, losing Transformers, Transformers, Star Wars for the kids. It's there's not much left that's there. Um, you know, like you said, it's just like hey, it's a uh, Sonic basically and are you know for the star trekky fans and godzilla but i really don't know like there's nothing else i pick up from idw anymore so right with like lock and key ending i mean that was one of the create like yeah the like original created like storylines um yeah you had a few things you had that uh space fired that scott snyder did um of course our buddy livio he did the the kill lock stuff oh, over yeah, there kill lock he was stuff. doing yeah that was great. he was doing cool. the transformers so they let him do his creator own stuff but yeah it's like nothing else really going on it's always an ip thing it's always a franchise you know 80s 90s 70s 80s 90s type of cartoon or something out of there yeah. so but good for them yeah, IP for stuff, them for changing IP over stuff has just never really had like the weight to it you know like i don't know there's not a ton of ip stuff i read where i'm like this really matters yeah. you know I, like Listen, it's cool Dynamite's to see you. doing a good job they're, yeah. they're really yeah. crushing yeah, it with job. a lot of the they're doing original story stuff and you know they got an awesome talent of or cast of artists and all that yeah. sort of stuff the thundercats johnny quest oh uh, yeah space ghost, space ghost. Yeah. like and you said terminators next Ultron month come so. back terminators gonna be awesome yeah so we're, we're looking forward to all that stuff but um good stuff with idw um one more yeah. article before we get out of here um a crossover that you never think that would happen justice league dc comics and Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> team up for global collaboration across comics right. and consumer products. Um, so this is coming over from DC Comics. This was a couple days ago. So um, today, Warner Brothers Discovery Global Consumer Products and Sega of America announcing an exciting new crossover partnership that teams up DC's Justice League with Sonic the Hedgehog and Team Sonic. Uh, Senior VP Ivo Garastavish uh, and brand uh, officer of Sonic, head of Sonic Brands shared the first official details of DC Cross Sonic collaboration this morning during Sonic's Sega's annual Sonic Central Live event. So going in starting in spring of 2025, the Justice League will meet Sonic and his friends in an all new five issue miniseries published by DC Comics and written by Ian Flynn, writer of the current Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. This new series features an unprecedented crossover event where the Justice League and Team Sonic must unite to save the world from a major threat. So the first details will be coming out first issues are coming out in march going through july and it's just so cool to see some of the photos i know again not a uh visual show but you have uh you have sonic obviously flash had to be which is uh, weird because he's like the leader and obviously flash never leads the yeah the justice <laughs> exactly but they couldn't give him anybody else but yeah i'm listen shadow dressed up like batman is yeah, probably cool. the coolest thing ever um you have amy rose as wonder woman you have knuckles as superman tails as cyborg and you have silver as the the green lantern so um it's just going to be a it's going to be interesting they're talking not only of just the comic book stuff but they're also going to be spinning out into um toys apparel collectibles all releasing in late 2025 and i feel like that's the continuing theme like we've seen this with with the idw stuff you know we've been getting crossover rumors with the teenage mutant ninja turtles right the latest release this this week was tmnt and he-man um, I think next month we have TMNT and uh, Naruto. It, like, yeah. what? Like, they're Whoa, doing that's awesome. Naruto? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> what? Like, okay. I've, they've done TMNT and Stranger Things. We've seen these crossovers across, you know, multiple platforms. But <laughs> I the love first that. time that we're yeah. getting video games. And it's wild because, listen, you've we've had our buddy v on here and he's talked mm -hmm. about doing a justice league crossover with final fantasy 7 yep like this is one step Not closer far to, off man you know getting some things so um you know kevin what you know what are your thoughts on like all these crossovers especially them 
announcing this. Dude, I love it when they lean into the fact that it's just a fun crossover. You know, like the yeah. Turtles crossovers are so freaking well done. They put top tier talent on them. Uh, we got to interview the artist from Turtles and Batman, Freddie something. Freddie Williams. Freddie, Freddie Williams, yeah. yeah. Super nice guy. It was really, really fun talking to him. And reading the story before I did the interview was like, like, oh my God, I should have been picking these up you know, ever since they started releasing. So yeah, I really dig a, a good crossover. The more weird and esoteric the mashup, the better for me. Mm. So like Naruto, bro, <laughs> give me a break. That's amazing. I would love to see video game and random. Oh my gosh. If you started getting crossover, like Chainsaw Man and like, you know what I mean? Like go for it, dude. As long as it's like a nice tight five issues, yeah. I can either collect that in a trade or, you know, pick them up weekly or monthly. I'm into it. I don't I don't oh, necessarily yeah. need like a crossover that's going to go for. Yeah, right. Like, like I think I think they did one. It was like. The shadow and someone on Dynamite. It was like a 12 issue or something like just give me a oh, short little. Much, yeah, give me a short little crossover. I need like a dread and Batman sort of crossover like that kind of stuff was always the always the best. Yeah. The Turtles and the Batman did it right where they had like they had three different five issue like crossovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like break them up or three. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in, in I, this is just it's just so random and so fun because, again, like you have the IDW Sonic stuff, which is just a cartoon. It's kid stuff. And then you have yeah. the serious side as the, the Justice League. Like how or what? And I know like in the world of DC Universe, there are superheroes that are animals and stuff like that. And they're aliens and stuff like so for the Justice League to run into Sonic the Hedgehog isn't the worst thing in the world, right? Like, it's not like, what the hell is this? Like, this is yeah. possible in a way, you know, and in like the multiverse of... They've got Grodd. Um, they're they're yeah. familiar kind of with... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and also, you know, I dare I say that the fan base for, you know, Justice League versus Sonic, like... The fan base is probably larger and deeper and you know more rooted with justice league but the fan base for sonic is freaking rabid so like i feel like it's a it's a great choice you bring mm -hmm. a bunch of like crazy fans who also as you've said like they've been losing ips and it's sort of whittled down to like just a few available options now like yep. fans don't just disappear they just go somewhere else so like you're getting lots and lots of really excited people who also with the massive explosion of retro gaming you know, you've got like preteens that are learning how to play Sonic the Hedgehog on little yeah. like, you know, handhelds and stuff like that. So I think it's perfect timing, man. They should do more like retro video game character. There's there's just so much content to plumb from that era that I yeah. think it's a great idea. Yeah, I guess it all depends on like what who who owns what IP realistically at this point. It's right. Really like, where, right. you know, because I think the last Mega Man series which was with Boom, like they did that. So do they still own it? Or, yeah, shit, I'd love a Devil May Cry crossover, but you know, again, oh, even man. like like I said earlier, like the the Naruto and TMNT, I think this would be realistically the first Naruto comic, you know, not manga related. So like, yeah, just keep it going. Like, give me a Bleach. Like, I'll take Bleach. I'll take a crossover <laughs> with you know, anything like that. So. Strange Academy meets My Hero Academia. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Crazy. Some wild stuff. Um, Zach, anything? Um, what do you think, real quick, on the the Justice League? Song? No, I, I think it's cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I like it. Um, I don't know. I'll, pro I'm, I'll read it. I'll check it out for sure. I think it's definitely a cool idea. I love the the way they look. It's so funny, too, because, I mean, like, it's like an artist's dream, right, too. <laughs> These characters look exactly the same. <laughs> All their faces <laughs> are exactly the same, except for tails and maybe knuckles, but... Um, Copy, the are just like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. The artists are just like, bet, dude. I can you draw one, you can draw them all. So, right, uh, black, blue. As I'm like, <laughs> as I'm a totally like demeaning artist, I don't mean that. I do not mean that. V, don't get mad at me. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I, I think it's cool. I think it's a really good idea. Um, I'd like to see, we'll just do the Sonic characters or something like that crossover with Voltron, have the same thing crossover. Now you got you're in the Voltron ships. Who's the the red Voltron, the blue Voltron. Like that's, I want Voltron back too. I'm a massive Voltron oh, yeah. fan. So yeah, I, I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm all about this old IP coming back and like revitalizing. And like, there's just, there's just so much stuff you can do now with them. Like they haven't been touched in so long. It's, I mean, dude, if you can, 
if you can restart X Men and the Avengers and Justice League like twenty times in one year monthly, <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, bro. Like, so yeah. I think it's cool. Yo, they need to bring back Silver Hawks. You guys Silver, Silver Hawks, Hawks? Yeah, yeah, I think B- uh, vaguely, like barely. It was never yeah, yeah. very popular. No, I think th- I, I think I've seen that's going to be popping up soon. Yeah, yeah. Did we talk about that? that? Yeah, that came somewhere. Yeah, we're we'll kind of we'll talk about that offline. But we'll leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. But um, that's it, everybody. Uh, we'll talk reads next week. It's been a long episode having Kevin on here. Uh, we appreciate Mr. Kevin from Shortbox. You can find him at Kevin underscore Shortbox. You can find him over at the Shortbox app. Make sure you f- download the free Shortbox app. Go ahead and find some books. Uh, slabs raws check out the auctions we're gonna have our auction like we said october 12th through the 14th um kevin any other words you'd like to speak before we get out of here uh just you know thanks for having me on guys it's always a pleasure hanging with you it's uh it's great to meet genuine people out in the community and just really connect outside of just where we collide so uh looking forward to your guys' sale um if you guys if anyone listening has any questions about the app or just about anything we talked about, uh, Kevin at shortbox.com. You can email me directly. And that's it. Nice. Uh, Zach? Nope. I'm good. Nothing uh, Nothing I can think of. Just plug New York. along, man. New York coming up. We got the Shortbox app. Of course, you could always find me um, on the Whatnot app, doing tons of Whatnot auctions. And, you know, Kevin, you know, like, uh, again, I... Thank you so much for coming on here. It's always a blast. And like I said in my post the other day with your poochie hat, um, you're you're seriously one of the coolest people that I don't get to see enough. Um, yeah, yeah, so, man. you know, I, I know you're not coming to New York, but I'm sure we'll we'll catch up at some point. And you, you know, you're always welcome on the show. So it's, it's always a lot of fun. So Kevin's one of the uh, the cool people that most people don't, you know, because you know what's great about you, Kevin? And again, this is everybody. Kevin doesn't have a YouTube channel. He's not a content creator. He's just a guy that works in comics. <laughs> sure. He's a lot of fucking fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> literally what it is. Like, I got time for that content shit. <laughs> dude, who does? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, dude. You're just, you're just such a, you are a, a great gentleman to have here and to Thanks, know man. in the community. So if you ever get a chance, people, if they, sh- if short box sets up, whether it's uh, San Diego, Baltimore uh, or heroes and you see Kevin um, definitely stop by and see him. Cause uh, he's an awesome gentleman. So um, that's Thanks, it, everybody. Man. Thank you so much for checking out the comic-con podcast this week. And we will be back next week. Later. 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 Hey, comic book collectors. Do you want to protect what you collect? Do you hate when your comic books slide around in your short box or you need to turn them sideways just so they don't bend or fall over? Well, look no further than Sidekick Supplies. Their product fits firmly inside your comic box, so you don't need to worry. And not only is their product made in the USA, but also ships free directly to your doorstop. Check out our sponsor, Sidekick Supplies at SidekickSupplies.com and use the code Comic-Con 15 for 15% off your purchase. Believe me, you'll be ordering more than one.